security space. Um, been doing that for eight years, and prior to that, I was nine years head of uh, security globally for Reuters. Um, the Reuters job was interesting <coughs> and kind of aligned to this in, in the fact that we had the biggest private global network in the world at that point. And uh, the interesting thing about it is that we had one million customer endpoints all on the outside. So it's almost like a cloud in reverse. Um, so we have to sort of like develop standards for that kind of thing, um, protecting endpoints that are outside of your control. And uh, we had to do that, say, 15 years ago. So um, it's interesting to see the progress and how it's all uh, changed around. But the same principles apply at all levels. So that's my background. Guy Bunker, um, I introduced a sort of uh, ex semantic or as chief scientist there, and I was responsible for their cloud computing strategy, which also had also security in there. Um, also worked very closely with Jericho, Jericho Form, and other spokespeople. Me from there, um, and then Inisa, who have just put out their uh, cloud security assessment document as well. Going back with standards, I was there for the, the start of the SNIA's um, uh, storage standards, and one of the things uh, that, that always uh, strikes a note, and the cloud is very similar at this point, is um, everybody is now says that they do cloud. Um, and everybody loves standards so much so they will have their own. And, and that is one of the problems. So everybody has a, a, a very much a, a, a thing that their standard and the way they do stuff is best because they don't have to change anything because they obviously comply and everybody else is rubbish and because they change their mind. Um, and we will be talking about which, which standards are good and which standards are bad and the reality is um, you know, both some are good, some are bad and it is up to customers and vendors and people like that to do something that's pragmatic <coughs> and drive that towards because if we wait for the standards, standards move at the glacial speed, if we wait for all the standards to align themselves, um, then the next big thing will come along um, and the cloud computing opportunity will be lost and we know there's a big cloud computing opportunity for all, all, all parties today. <coughs> cool, thank you. Ian Moyes, Samir Chandra, uh, been in IT 25 years, started off in mainframes, system analyst, um, so I'm, we're going back round now to centralised computing again with the cloud. So I'm very used to that background. I'm glad that's where it's going again because it's easier to manage the users. I've spent eight years in security now, and uh, the past six of that in software as a service security, so hosted cloud, whatever you want to call it. Everyone's got a different view. Um, my interest is I'm also on the cloud industry forum where we're trying to come up with some sort of standards around this, which aren't technology standards. They're more for the cloud industry, and I was there this morning working on that. So we'll see how we can bring those together. And I think one of the biggest things I'm, I'm trying to get to grips with is where are the customer standards rather, rather than the vendor standards. Here's the standard for us vendors that we all want to put to the market, but what's relevant to the actual customer out there? What do they care about? Because I think that's more important and that's not how the industry tends to look at this. You have to be able to understand what it is you're looking at when you're buying these things. Um, and so by way of example, if you go to Amazon, put in you want to buy something. Amazon probably sell it, so you can sell everything. But then after that it's marketplace. And if you go to Amazon.com rather than Marketer UK, you see just how big the marketplace is. And and at that point you've got a number of things that you can look at. You can look at how much they're going to charge me and then what is their sort of reputation based upon what other people say. And now you know that reputation we can debate as to whether it's good, bad or indifferent, but it's there. And if they've got you know if they're selling CDs um, and they've got you know, 115,000 positive ratings over the last 12 months, then probably they're pretty okay for buying CDs from it. If they've only got three, then you might sort of think twice about it. But it's a very quick and easy thing for anybody to understand. We have to be very careful if we start talking about it. So one of the things within Anisa that we're, we're looking at doing is whether or not we can have a sort of standard checklist for people to go through. And when we were discussing what should be on that checklist, we then ended up sort of saying, well, hang on a minute, you know, are small medium businesses going to understand any or of these care. things or care? Mm. And how do we get to the point where they, they find it out? Um, and, and Amazon, using Amazon again as an example, you know, if you're buying something worth £2.50, um, then you probably don't care where it's coming from or what it is. If you decide to buy you know, a Range Rover off of Amazon, then you'll probably be a little bit more careful about what it is you're looking at. Um, and, and it is very much horses for courses and what's out there and what's not. So when we just start looking at you know, applications, if your application is just um, a government information website, then it really doesn't matter if it's sitting out on Amazon. If 
it's their way of collecting council tax and it's got all your bank details of standing water and probably you don't want it sitting out in the, in, in the public cloud somewhere and, and understanding that difference goes a long way to understanding risks and consequences then you can then start to vaguely think about risk appetite but you have to get it down into something that people understand because most people don't understand anything about the data center application owners and people who are using them and want to use them they don't understand about data center and security and what's your door policy and things like that so so it's a it's a hard question which is i guess why we're all here <laughs> well, i just want it. to pick up one thing that, that, that you said there guy about public cloud because because i think there's because cloud providers use firewalls as well uh, and, and i think that we need to be careful about the term about using this terminology that implies that if it's on the private cloud, if it's on the public cloud, then it's open to all and sundry to you know, uh, peruse it at their leisure, um, when in fact it depends on what is the service that, you, that, that you're buying. And, and if it's on Amazon protected by, uh, by, 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 by Chris and, uh, and, and Pat's kit, um, it's probably more secure than it is in most town halls data centers. Uh, because uh, uh, because there, there's there, there's more uh, security going into that configuration than um, uh, than the typical town hall IT staff can keep up with. So um, I, I think it's not the the, the 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 cloud per se. The public cloud is is it, it can actually be parts of it can be very private if they're configured in the right way. Oh, without a doubt, and if you start to throw in other privacy sort of enhancing technology, i.e. encryption, a whole different issue around key management, but we'll leave that one for a minute. But if you do that, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to use it. There are still a few things that you, if you want to become ultra paranoid, so working for, well, I'm sure we're both ultra paranoid as well, but you then start saying, well, if it's decrypted, you can actually get at it when it's in memory on the processor, when it's unencrypted, but let's pretend that's not going to be a, a general problem for it. What's more of an issue, even within the public cloud, is, I mean, I don't know how many people have day-to-day -day data center operations um, and how often misconfigured storage occurs. Um, misconfigured storage within a one company data center, even outsourced um, set of information, really doesn't matter. When you misconfigure it in the cloud, um, and then all of a sudden you thought that nobody had access, but in fact it turns out they did have access, whether they used it or not, it doesn't matter. Um, then that is an issue. So you, know, you, you do have to start to look at all these different options to make the decision. Um, but, but I would agree, back to the yes, security can be better. Yes, availability can be miles better than what small companies particularly can provide. Um, and yes, you can have access to more things that you can never afford otherwise. Um, you just have to know the questions you're asking. There is a power, and we we'll use that word, exists palatability. Um, for cloud, because if you think of it, I, I quite often present to end-use audiences to Intersect last year, and I was getting them trying to get interaction. And how many of you are on Hotmail? How many are on Facebook? Well, that's cloud. How many, and, and you get all the audience, all security guys from companies going, I'm on Facebook. Right, what are we all posting on that? And so that, that's helping in a way now stimulate the fear for cloud, cause, uh, but it's also stimulating the fear, fear in customers for security, because it's in the newspapers every morning. It's affecting everyone. Everyone reads about it. You don't have to be in IT. Oh my God, look, someone's done this on Facebook. Oh, they've posted this and they've been fired because of it. There's another story every week. And that's cloud. And how many people send confidential information? I mean, I'm paranoid. If someone says, oh, I need your bank details, I'll, set, I'll text the code, and the other part goes in email. Because I'm how many people just go after it all in email? That email's not secure. That's going across the public internet. The internet is totally insecure. But most people just send stuff on the email. And we can often use that as an example of the internet you know, de by definition, isn't secure. You're doing a lot right now. You don't even know is insecure. So, cloud by definition, just because it's on the internet, is not insecure. You need to look at it in its instance. Who thinks? You know, you, you actually ask someone, "Have you ever sent anything confidential on email?" You probably shouldn't have done. When they think about it, oh my god, yeah. But we all do it. Yeah. And even at the even at the access point, right? Last week, Google switched everybody basically to HTTPS by default, right? Just saying. At least your pull down is now. And I was going to make that point that, that maybe cloud providers should actually take more responsibility for uh, for, for encouraging customers <coughs> to use secure practices like Google defaulting to HTTPS. Uh,